So, uh, so these are our uh, four best paper candidates, and we're going to start with the first one by Daniel Oten, and then the title for that is Green Traffic Engineering by Lin Line Card Minimization. Daniel is a second year PhD student in the University of Osnabrück, right, and doing uh, research on uh, traffic engineering, and we should also have the OC and SC members those cards for voting, so if you don't have that, let us know. And then we will be collecting and telling them. Right? Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, thank you for the introduction. Today I will present uh, our work in traffic engineering by like optimization. So when we look at our modern world, we are confronted with news about the climate change on an almost daily basis. And I think we all know that we need to reduce our energy consumption to reduce uh, our overall emission of greenhouse gases. And one field that is often overlooked when it comes to uh, greenhouse gas emissions is the greenhouse, uh, for all the greenhouse gas emissions caused by uh, our IT infrastructure. And I have pre uh, prepared a small figure here on the right side, um, where we can see our IT infrastructure is responsible for nearly as much greenhouse gas emissions as the whole economy of India. So um, that's quite a lot. Um, depending on the source, up to 10% of the global greenhouse gas emissions are caused by our IT infrastructure. And one part of our IT infrastructure are so-called backbone networks. So what is a backbone network? Um, a backbone network is a network run by an internet service provider. Um, they're connecting smaller customer networks with each other, and they're also connecting um, our homes with the internet. So um, yeah, you usually uh, see them once a month on your checking account, as like Orange or AT&T or the German Telecom. And okay, when we want to reduce the power consumption of the um, of a backbone network, we need to have a look at the traffic that is processed by a uh, backbone network. And so first of all, we analyze the overall traffic pro uh, processed by a German tier one ISP over the course of a day. And we can see the maximum amount of traffic is processed in the evening hour, um, but more noticeable in the morning hours between one o'clock in the morning and nine o'clock in the morning, the uh, amount of traffic that the network has to process drops dramatically, um, drops to um, nearly 50% of the daily maximum. So yeah, we can see parts of the infrastructure are not always needed as the network is built to carry the maximum amount of traffic. And when we keep in mind that the power consumption is comparable um, to the city of Berlin, um, I think we can all agree, okay, it's a good idea to make our backbone networks greener. So how, does it, uh, how is the power consumption of a backbone network made up? The power consumption of a backbone network is simply the power consumption of the backbone network routers. And the router consists of several components. And the most important component are the line cards. Um, they provide the endpoints for the connection, the so-called ports. And when we look at the power consumption of a router, we can see the line cards consume the vast majority of power overall in, uh, in the router. So um, that's all you need to know. They provide the endpoints for the connections, and they consume the vast majority of power uh, inside the network. So when it comes to green traffic engineering, um, we have several target functions. The first target function that came to our mind is, we, okay, we could turn a whole router off, but um, this is not feasible because routers take about half an hour to reboot and they are made for long uptimes. So um, by rebooting the uh, routers, and we have a high certainty that uh, hardware failures may occur um, during the reboot. And more important, um, we uh, the routers are connected with customer networks, and therefore, when we want to turn off the whole router, we have to uh, disconnect the customer networks from the backbone network, and that is not possible because that's why we have the backbone network at all. We need to connect our customer networks. So now, now we know. Okay, turning a whole, a whole router off is not a good idea. So. What about turning some unnecessary links off? Okay, maybe we have some unused capacity and we don't need the whole link. So we can switch off the link and then we can deactivate the corresponding port on the line card. And yeah, we found out that this does not affect the power consumption of the network at all. Um, we conducted a measurement 
and we presented the, uh, the, uh, the measurement methods at the GreenNet workshop at the ICT um, this year in May. And so there's only one uh, remaining target function for green traffic engineering, and that is turning unnecessary line cuts off. Um, yeah, first of all, they consume the vast majority of power within the network, and some modern line cuts are built with a green design. So they are capable um, of turning on and uh, off very quickly. So um, yeah, overall, this is the way to go. We need to turn off unnecessary line cuts within the network to reduce the overall power consumption of the network. So in the next step, we analyze the problem. Um, we modeled the network as a directed graph. And um, yeah, we are searching for routing policy which routes all traffic. That is called MCF, or this is short for multi-community flow. And we want to minimize the number of overall active line cuts in the network. Therefore, we call them LC. So yeah, MCF LC is short for multi-community flow line cut version. And here we have our first result. The problem is NP hard in every manner. So um, even if we can assign ports to uh, arbitrary line cards or um, if we fix the port line card mapping. And now at first I wanted to show you a proof, but I was told um, we don't have time for that. So anyway, let's talk about some practical aspects. So um, I just told you we need a routing policy, but how do we implement a routing policy in our network? Um, and we decided to use segment routing to do so, because on the one hand, we need to reduce the algorithmic complexity of the problem, and on the other hand, we need to rely on an already implemented um, traffic engineering method. So traffic engineering is quite simple. So when the traffic enters the network, for example, at point A, and we have to forward the traffic to C, we usually rely on shortest pass routing. So we send the traffic to B and then um, forward to C. And when we want to change the path of the traffic, we can simply add a label when the traffic enters the network. So when the traffic enters the network at point A, we simply add a label G. And now the traffic is forwarded to G. The router G pops the label of the label stack and then forwards the traffic to C. And this is called two segment routing because we are relying on two segments. The first segment from A to G and the second segment from G to C. So um, now with this method, we cannot use um, every possible path in the network. We can just use paths that are made up of, um, as the concatenation of two shortest paths. So on the one hand, we reduce the algorithmic complexity and on the other hand, we can rely on an already implemented method. So first of all, um, we implemented um, both approaches with, um, with our uh, with integer linear programming techniques. Um, the first um, algorithm we implemented is the original MCF LC uh, linear program. This is the NP hard version. Um, of the uh, of the problem, and this yields us a theoretical upper bound for the number of inactive line uh, cards we can achieve overall in the network. We choose to uh, set the upper bound for the link utilization to seventy percent um, because uh, we need some extra room or some extra capacity for uh, sudden traffic spikes and um, some resiliency uh, capacity. So, and the second algorithm we implemented is the 2SR version of the MCF LC problem. There we cannot use every possible path. We simply uh, reduce our solution space to all uh, two segment routable paths. So here we can just use the concatenation of two shortest paths. And which data sets did we use for our evaluation? We, first of all, use the repetitor data set. It consists of uh, 21 random, uh, it consists of several real world topologies, and we choose uh, 20 random instances. Um, the topologies are real world topologies, but the traffic in the framework is made to mimic the uh, maximum amount of traffic that the network is capable to process. So um, 
when we remember the second slide is the amount of traffic we usually process in the evening hours. And we want to mimic the low load phase, so we decided to reduce our overall traffic by 50%. And there is no hardware information um, within this data set, so we decided to uh, assume the usage of the A99 A400 GETR line card. That's the line card I've shown you a few slides before. And the second data set um, we use uh, consists of several Bluebird instances uh, from a German tier one ISP. Um, we decided to take one snapshot uh, from every month of 2020 and 2022. And all snapshots were taken at one o'clock in the morning. Um, that's the beginning of the loadout phase I've shown on um, the second slide. And we also assume the usage of the same line card. Um, so whenever we are able to turn off eight ports on one router, we assume that we can switch one line card off. So let's talk about our results. So first of all, um, we compared our solution value of 2SR LC with the MCF LC um, program. So we compared our heuristic with the optimal result. So, um, of all, we found that uh, in, 20, in 18 out of 21 instances, we um, could calculate an optimal result with our 2SR heuristic. Um, there are only three instances where we couldn't um, calculate an optimal result, but we uh, managed to obtain a nearly optimal result. So we worked approximately at 93% of the optimal uh, result. But we managed to um, reduce the computation time significantly. Please note that we the time scale is uh, log scale. So uh, overall, um, yeah, we reduce the uh, computation time significantly. Um, so last but not least, let's talk about the results we obtained by evaluating our approach on a uh, real world data set. We managed to turn off about 80% of all line cards. And this, and when you remember um, the third slide, I've, I showed you that um, the line cards consume the vast majority of power within the network. They consume about 75% of the power within the router. So um, we were able to theoretically reduce the uh, overall power consumption by 50%. And more important, the heuristic works on bigger instances. The real world instances are far bigger than the uh, repetitor instances. Um, we were not able to calculate an optimal uh, solution with the MCF as the LP on the uh, bigger real world instances, but um, we, we managed to obtain an optimal solution value of our heuristic. So last but not least, uh, First of all, um, we, pro uh, we provided a, a traffic analysis and showed that there is some poten uh, saving potential um, within a backbone network. Then based on a uh, measurement, we developed a new target function for green traffic engineering. And in the next step, we provided a complexity analysis of the problem. And in the last step, we provided a detailed evaluation um, of our approach showing um, that we can uh, use our uh, approach on a real world data set. And we could uh, show that um, our approach can calculate nearly optimal solutions in a uh, significantly reduced computation time. In the future, we have to examine the resiliency of the reduced topologies um, because by turning some links off, um, yeah, we uh, lose some uh, extra capacity that is maybe used for uh, uh, link failures and, and so on. And of course, we have to consider additional management constraints because uh, just by um, implementing a path, uh, yeah, just because we can implement a path, that doesn't mean we should implement the path because, uh, yeah, maybe there are, um, we don't want to direct the traffic to a certain country or so on. So, um, yeah, thank you for your attention. And, um, yeah, do you have any questions? Thank you. So it was earlier than what you have.
you, you did have three four minutes, I guess. Oh, oh sorry. That, that's okay. Yeah, okay. Sorry, so we can take more questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any questions? You have to have hard ask questions because it's got uh, 10 minutes, right? So if Thank you for the great presentation. I like that idea of when we can turning off some browser. However, in opposite, uh, what's the discussion that you uh, your group or, or the, you going to have about the reliability of the network when we don't want to turn too many router off on that? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, so that by turning the router off, um, you have to steer all traffic away from that router. And therefore, um, to, uh, no traffic can enter or leave the network through this router. And usually, the, uh, the router is not only connected within the backbone network, um, routers um, also connected to a network outside of the backbone network. And just by turning the uh, router off, you would exclude the customer network from the backbone network. And the backbone network is there to connect the customer networks with each other. So, yeah, this is not feasible. Anybody? Good. Okay. Uh, we thank the one first speaker and we'll set up the second one. Um, thank you.